Hello, everyone. How are you doing tonight? We are glad and excited to be back uh, among the saints. Glad to have um, everybody here tonight. We're doing something different tonight. Um, you know, the youth Bible study, we, 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 we did a book study, Left Behind the Kids, and we did book one. Well, the backdrop of that book or the setting of that book was the rapture. The rapture had taken place. And so uh, as we go into the young people said they wanted to go on and do book two. But as we go into book two, it'll bring them to the tribulation period. So uh, I thought it would be a good idea tonight for pastor to talk to us about the tribulation period. You know, we've heard so much um, from so many things and so many places and so many people. And so tonight we want to dispel some of the myths um, as far, even as far as people saying that the vaccine is a mark of the beast. So tonight we're going to deal with the tribulation period because as the children begin to study the book two, the children will be living during the tribulation period because they have been left behind. And so tonight we're going to start with prayer and then we will pick up with period. All right, let's have a few minutes of prayer first. And again, we thank you and we praise you for all things. We thank you for today and how you allowed us to live. God, I'm grateful for my health, my strength. I'm grateful, Lord, for my family. Yes, Lord. The church family, all ones. It is you, nobody but you that has protected us, yes, provided God. for us, made a way for us. Yes, we Lord. thank you, God, those that went to school and went to work. Yes, they Lord. have gone and they have returned home. We thank you for keeping them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray that this teaching will be a blessing to our young people as, as well as others, oh God, who will yes, be joining Lord. us tonight. Lord, help our young people. Oh, God. Help them, Lord. Help them to open their eyes to see what is going on. In the name of Jesus. And that they need a Savior. They need you, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, that this is not just something that we're just doing, that it's not something that's just old-fashioned and outdated. Yes, God. But, Lord, we realize that we're trying to convey this to our children that your word is so important. Yes, God. And it is a word for today. God, I pray that you will save that you will save and deliver young people everywhere, young men, young women, oh God. Lord, particularly in our community, the black community, so much is going on. Our young men need to be saved. Yes, our young Lord. ladies need to call on your name. Yes, touch their minds and touch their hearts. And then we pray, God, for the safety of our children that are in school. And now we have this Delta variant. Lord, let a blessing of your healing, your protection, be upon all of our children. Yes, Lord. In the name of in teachers name of and Jesus. administrators, those who work with them, keep them, Lord, in these schools. And then we pray, Lord, for the healing of others, both children and adults that have been stricken with this virus. Touch yes, them, God. Lord. Yes, Let them recover, oh God. We Jesus. pray, God, that you will heal the land and take this virus from among us, God, according to your will. God, we're looking to you. Our hope is in you. Our faith look up to thee. Yes, God. There's none like you. You are an all-powerful God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your goodness. We yes, thank you God. for your mercies. Oh, God, we thank you. Praise your name for all that you've done. Yes, God. You're so good. Lord, yes, bless Lord. your people. These that are gathering now yes, God. for this prayer, for this Bible study. Let every person under the sound of my voice, let them be blessed, God. You know, needs of the people. You know our prayers. You know our situations, what we're facing, what yes, we're going Lord. through. Lord, we look to you, God, because you are the answer. You are the way. And God, again, we thank you for what you've done. Now, Lord, before we conclude this prayer, hearts go out to those individuals that are in Louisiana now, yes, Southern Mississippi, that Lord, the people there uh, don't have basic needs now because of the storm. Yes, God. God, I pray that you will lighten the burden, that you will the bless Jesus. these individuals. Lord, let the help reach them soon and very yes, soon, God. God. Lord, they're speaking about how these people are going to be without power for a while, and the heat oh, is, is, is overbearing yes, in the daytime. So, Lord, the we pray that you will let them restore the power, that you 
let the blessings flow there. Help yes, these God. individuals, oh God. Protect them, Lord. Protect In the name God. of Jesus. Jesus. We love you, God. Yes, God. We just praise you. We give you the glory. We yes, give you the honor. In amen. amen and amen. All right. We do thank God for uh, being here on this evening. And um, you just want me to start or how you want to do? I'm ready for you. You're ready for me. Okay. All so right. In case somebody came on late, we want to say that uh, as we go into our new book, where the children have been left behind, they will have to go through the tribulation period. So we are going to have Pastor come and talk to us about the tribulation period so that we can understand some of the things that the children will have to go through during the tribulation period. So we want our children to sit tight. We want them to ask questions. Pastor is trying to, he, he, he's trying to water down a little bit in the sense that, or he's trying to bring it down so, so that the children can understand it. And so if he, if he, if he hasn't brought it down enough, I try to help him bring it down a little taste more. And then we want you to ask questions. Yes, please ask questions. Uh, this uh, subject, it, it can be very technical. I'm going to try to present it in a way for, for everybody to understand. But we want you to ask questions. We want you to give your comments. And that's for both children and adults. We want to hear from you. But the tribulation period, what is this period? Well, first of all, let's talk about the time length. It is a period of seven years. Seven years. It would be divided into two parts. The first three and a half is known as the lesser tribulation. Second half is called freedom tribulation. Now, what's the difference between the two? I think you see in the word lesser and greater. The worst part of the things that will be happening on this earth will occur in the last three and a half. Now, that's not to say you won't have some bad things that to occur in the first half, but it becomes worse in the uh, second half. And one of the reasons is because the Antichrist is going to have more power. Plus, this will be the time where Satan himself, uh, his, along his fallen angels and demons, will be cast into the earth. That is, they will be bound on this earth. Let me just go and say something about that now. We're going to talk about it later. But let me just say this. Many people uh, wrongly think that Satan is in hell. He is not in hell. No doubt he's never been there. Okay. So he's not in hell. He's not sitting down there with a, uh, sitting on the black throne with a pitchfork, with a pitchfork torturing the people. Mm -hmm. Because when he does go there one day, uh, he's going to be tortured just like anybody else. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Yes. Satan and the name devil, the term, term devil that's referring to the same person. So he's not there. So where is he? He primarily probably is roaming in the heavens. What I mean by the heavens? The Bible talks about three heavens. And I don't have time to get into all of that. And I don't want to get anybody confused. But one of those heavens is a star of space, out of space. So he primarily roams there. But guess what? He can go to the third heaven at this time. And that's where God is. That is that's where his throne is. He goes in and he talks with him. We, we know that from several scriptures um, that are in the Bible. And then he has the ability to come to the earth as he please and leave as he please. But in the middle of the tribulation period, that is going from the lesser tribulation to the greater tribulation, he's going to be cast to the earth and no longer will be able will be allowed to roam in outer space, which is primarily your second heaven. And he will no longer have access to go to the third heaven uh, to converse with God. We'll come back to that hopefully we have enough time. But let me read a scripture. Uh, maybe two scriptures real quick. Uh, these are the words of Jesus to, to describe. He describes how bad this place, uh, how bad this period of seven years would be. Let's give you two, here two scriptures. Matthew 20, 21, also uh, Mark 13. Let me read these. 
That is, the first script is Matthew 24 and 21. And the second script is Mark 13 and 19. Then I can answer a question that has already come up. All right, Matthew 24 and 21 says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, no, nor ever shall be. That's, of course, the King James Version. I, I, I see, can I break that down a little bit better? Because that may be a little hard, hard for some of you to understand. But uh, I think Mark 13 and 19, which, which Jesus is speaking here, and is really saying the same thing, but a little bit different. And maybe this is a little bit easier for you to understand. Mark 13 and 19 says, for in those days shall be affliction, affliction is another word for trouble, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created until this time, neither shall be. Now, what is Jesus saying? He's saying that this time period of seven years is going to be the worst since God has created this world. Mm. It's going to be the worst time that the world has ever seen since the creation and, 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 and even the time after the tribulation period. There will never be another time period that will be so bad. If you think that today's time is bad, and it is, with this coronavirus, which is real bad. Plus, we have what? Uh, we just witnessed this terrible hurricane uh, that has done much damage. There are fires out there on the West Coast. You got all kinds of problems. People are shooting, mass shootings, yes. uh, drive-by shootings. It's, 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 it's terrible. But Jesus said that what we're going through now is not nearly going to be as bad as the tribulation period. It's going to be much worse than what we're witnessing today. Okay, so let's go to that question you showed me. If you can put that back on me. Okay. Look at that question right quick. She's looking for the question real quick here. Yes. All right, here's the question. Is this the period or time when Jesus returned and does his judgment of our works done here on the earth? I guess it's saying happened at that time. Okay, let me say this. Um, when you talk about Jesus returning, uh, the kids have, have uh, the what Left Behind series, kids series, you just did the book on the rapture. In the rapture, what is the rapture? It is a snatching away. In other words, what's going to happen on the day of the rapture and the day of the resurrection? Jesus is going to come from heaven, but he's going to stop in midair. He's not going to set his feet on this earth. He's going to stop in midair. All of the saints, dead and alive, those that have died, uh, Paul tell, tells us that they're going to come forth out of the grave. By the time they come up out of the grave, those that remain alive, he said, we would be caught up together to meet him in air. And he would take the saints back to heaven. All right. And when we go back to heaven, looking at how the question was worded, that would be the, the judgment of the saints, judgment for our works, not sin. Our sins have been forgiven, but we will be judged for our works. Now, at that same time, uh, while we're in heaven, uh, being judged for our works, this is the this will be the time that the Antichrist is going to arrive uh, on the scene. Uh, the Antichrist could very well already be here. Now, listen, the Antichrist is going to be a man. He's going to be a man, but he's going to let me put it this way: uh, he's going to be exceptional because Satan himself along with one of his most powerful fallen angels are going to work directly with him. And he's going to have some abilities uh, that maybe the, the ordinary individual will not have. All right. And so he, he's going to be given some special abilities, but now he's not going to be revealed. And you can go and read this, especially you adults who are here tonight, but even the children. You can read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The word in there is in that chapter is not the best in the King James Version, but let me just describe what he's saying. He's really saying 
that the Antichrist is not going to be revealed until the church is raptured, until the, the saints are taken out of this world. Then his identity is going to be revealed. So what does that tell us? He could very well already be in the world. He just won't be revealed right. until after the rapture. Correct. So if the rapture were to take place tomorrow, take place next year, next five years, that would probably mean that the Antichrist is already in the world, probably full grown, but will not reveal himself as so until the rapture takes place. Now, he's probably going to be a man of, he, that's probably already got a lot of money and probably some prestige. But so far as being the one that will call the Antichrist, he's not going to have, he's not, he will not have revealed himself. He cannot reveal himself until we are gone as the saints. You got a question think, or comment? Uh, you, know, you know, it would make sense because we say that the, the uh, rapture is imminent. It can happen at any moment. Right. And so in order for him to be revealed during the tribulation period, he will have to already have been born and grown to maturity while the saints are still here. Right, right. So... If the rapture, and we do believe the rapture takes take place soon. Now, here's the thing. We don't know when the rapture We don't know. Okay. So, well, we believe it can take place soon. So, if that is the case, if that is the case, then uh, he's probably already in the world. I'm trying to ask. I see your hand. Yeah. Sister Night, is that you want, want to ask a question? The yes, ma'am. You trying to ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, like those that are already in the past, um, and I don't know. I'm talking about the one that uh didn't live a saved life. I don't know if they live a saved life or not. I'm just trying to say, not the one that lived in Christ and they died. Those that they live in Christ and died. Uh, when the end of the world come, and those that left behind, once Jesus come and receive him unto himself, even the dead will, those that died already, be able to come back and live on earth when we on earth. Uh, in a... Okay. Hello? Yes, yes. I was listening. We're trying to get understand. I, I think I know where you're going. Is that if you, you're saying, what about those persons who have already and they were not saved? Is that where you're going? Yes, sir. Now, those persons who um who have died who were not saved, they're gonna they're gonna have to be resurrected too. But guess what? Their resurrection is called the second resurrection. And it will not happen until really about a thousand years later. Now it's going a little deeper because you got to go past the tribulation period, past the millennium period. They will come out of the grave and they will have to appear before God at the great white throne judgment. So you to answer your question. No, they will not be coming back uh, to live on this earth because when they come to the grave, they're going to be judged for their sin, and the Bible lets us go in the book of Revelation, that they will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the final hell, the eternal hell. Once they go to the lake of fire, they will not be coming out again. That is throughout all the eternity. Okay, but I can't, I don't want to take my hand down, though, but uh, that's no my, problem. That my question. Okay. No problem. No problem. I'll take it down. <laughs> Oh. All right, other questions? Okay, let's look at a little, little bit more in terms of the tribulation period. So now, the tribulation, if you want a reference in the book of Revelation, it actually starts with Revelation chapter 6. I don't have time to read a lot of scripture. I want to read a few scriptures. But if you go to Revelation chapter 6, I want to read uh, a couple of scriptures here. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, 
I'm so sorry I had intended to have a PowerPoint, had a script printed for you, but I just ran out of time today. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, John said these where he said, I saw when the lamb, the lamb here is, is really speaking of Jesus, opened one of the seals. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts said, come and see. Now, John actually going to see seven seals. You know, like, you know what a seal is, like a like tape or something that you break. And every time a seal was broken, it revealed the judgment and the wrath of God that is come. Or let me put it this way, events at the beginning of the tribulation. The first seal is recorded in verse two. He said, I saw him held a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow. So John said, I saw a white horse. There was a man who was riding on this horse and he had a bow, but he didn't have arrows. All right, so now we are in the lesser tribulation. Right, the lesser tribulation. In the lesser tribulation. The very beginning. At the beginning of the lesser tribulation. All right, and see, what is, what is this, this uh, man that's riding the white horse? This man symbolizes the Antichrist himself. He has a bow, but he doesn't have any arrows. When you look at that scripture. Now, that bow represents uh, the fact, well, let me put it this way. He has a bow and no arrows. You know, you, you, you got a bow, you need an arrow to shoot. The reason that has no arrows is because the Antichrist is going to come at first as a man of peace. He's going to deceive the world, all right? He's going to make folks think that I have the answer to the world's problem. Now, listen. He's going to be a very smart man, very intelligent man, a very good speaker, but he's going to have a lot of evil intentions. And what he's going to do, and I hope I'm not being too technical here, but what he's going to do, he's going to play upon the fears of people because the world then is going to be very chaotic. Those of you, uh, you children uh, who have been doing this book with Sister Riley, that book dealt with the rapture. And she talked about what's going to happen on the day of the rapture. You know, you're going to have all kinds of accidents. You're going to have all kinds of uh, traumatic scenes. Children that have no parents because the parents were saved and left this world. You're going to have some parents yeah. that, or die. Mm -hmm. That's right, or die. Then you're going to have some parents with no children because the children were saved, but the parents were not. So a lot of people are going to be killed. Because of this, the stock market is going to go wild. I mean, prices of food and everything else is going to go up immediately. You know, total chaos. You, you're going to have some people uh, coming on CNN and Fox News trying to explain the disappearance of millions of folk plus braves that have no bodies. And some are probably going to say, well, some UFOs have come here and have, have taken these people away. They don't have other explanations. You're going to have some looting. Did y'all see on the news? I saw this today that down there in New Orleans or somewhere down in Louisiana uh, because of the hurricane, because everything is just chaotic down there. The folks are breaking their stores and they're stealing stuff. Looting. That happens a lot of times when you have natural disaster. Well, it's going to, it, it, that's going to be, uh, uh, you're going to see a lot of that if you hit for the tribulation. All right, so, and, and, and then Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, let me go back and read something from Matthew chapter 24, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse, verse 5 and 6. Let me tell you what, what happened before those verses. The disciples want to know, Lord, what will be the signs of the end of the world? And Jesus said in verse 6, let me just go right to verse 6, he said, and you should hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things will come to pass, but the end is not yet. So Jesus lets us know there's going to be all kinds of wars. All right? And so during this chaotic time after the rapture, yes, you probably will have some wars that are going to break out. Let me just say there will be wars throughout the tribulation period. That's going to be another thing that's going to be real bad. There will be wars throughout the tribulation period. So it's going to start, no doubt, or many of these wars are probably going to start right after the rapture. So the, the Antichrist is going to show up as a man of peace, good speaker, well-versed. You know, people are going to like him, but he's got some he's hidden because he wants to rule the world. 
in order for him to rule the world, guess what he's going to do? He start some wars to defeat some people. So the first seal reveals him. The second seal, the, the second seal is really talking about war. I don't have time to read all the scripture. I want to read just some of them in verse four. Well, verse three, Revelation, six, six. Revelation chapter six, verse three talks about the second seal uh, being open. And, and uh, John here, John is the one who wrote this. I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And if you look at the last part of the scripture, say, and that was given unto him a great sword. So, the, the second seal has a rider on there uh, riding, and this horse is red. That horse and that rider represents war. Okay. So it's letting them know that the Antichrist, when he comes forward first as a man of peace, then he's going to start some wars because he wants to take over the world. Now, what happens when you have a war? Well, if, if, if you're going to have a war, uh, and it's a major war. And can I say this real quick? I, there's a whole lot I want to say, and I got to, I got to speak this up. Oh, don't, don't speak but, but, but let me say this. America has really been blessed. Yes, yes. Because none of you have never seen a war in this country. I mean, you know, with soldiers invading this country, and then our soldiers fighting to, to stop the invasion, you know, in other words, uh, somebody bombing in Greenville, bombing Lake Village, you know, people dying. We got to go in bomb shelters. We got to hide. And you then folk walk, walk, walking up and down the street from another nation shooting. We've never seen that folk. But other nations have said, exactly, Afghanistan mm -hmm. is torn up right now. Yeah. But we've never seen that. But in this particular time, you're going to have wars breaking out somewhere everywhere. And, and if you got a war breaker, here's the point I want to make coming up to the, the third seal. If you got a war breaking out or wars, then the farmers can't get to the fields as right. So there's going to be a shortage of food. And a shortage of food causes what? A famine. All right. In verses five and six, you have a black horse. In verse, the last part of verse six, verse, verse five. We're on the second seal. No, 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 no. We're, we're on the third seal now. Third seal is famine. Black horse. All right. If I've gone a little too fast since rallies, today, I'm going too fast New York. Third seal is a black horse, represents famine. And look at what, what the Bible says here a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. It's really talking about the fact. That there is going to be a food shortage. What, what, what verses? That's verse reading? six that I was reading. Okay. Revelation six and six. What happens if you have a famine? You don't have no food. People die. Mm. All right. That's the fourth seal. The fourth, yeah, seal, the fourth seal. Yes, with the fourth beast. It's going to be a pale horse that signified death. That means a lot of people are going to be dying. And then there's a rider acting called hell. And that's chaos. Plus, I believe it alludes to certain people actually going to hell because they were not saved. That's the fifth seal? Uh, no, that's still the fourth seal. Fourth seal, you have the pale horse, which is dead. Uh -huh, and hell to follow, is what the scripture says. And hell to follow. Uh -huh. And that's the fourth seal. All right. Now, the fifth seal is a little bit different. All right? And, and, and Ooh, we have time is, is really going. But the fifth seal is a little bit different. Why? Because in, in the fifth seal, there's a scene in heaven. And John said that he saw these souls that were under the altar, souls of those that were slain. Now, these are what you these are these people that he saw, their soul in heaven. These are people we call the tribulation saints. Now, here's the thing. There are some people who are going to get saved after the, after the rapture of the church in the of this chaos and crisis. But let me tell you something, folks. Let me say something to my young people here. Today is the day that you need to give your heart to the Lord. It's relatively easy 
Yes, All yes. that the Lord requires of you is for you to acknowledge your sin. First of all, I am a sinner. I've done wrong. Lord, I repent of my sins. I want to, I want to be saved. Repentance means a turnaround. It, it, it means that when I tell God to save me and I'm repenting of my sins, uh, I'm going to do all I can not to go back into what the Lord has saved me from. And I say, I'm going to do, but actually what's going to happen? You have to surrender to God. <laughs> and when you surrender to God, his spirit lives in you to empower you to live right. The thing you have to do is simply surrender to God. Give your heart to the Lord. Give your heart and live the way God wants you to live. Now, if you are here after the rapture of the church and decide that you want to be saved, look at this. there would be no church here. Mm. Pastor Riley, Sister Riley, we're going to be gone. We're going to be in heaven. So all the real preachers, those folks that are really saved, they are going to be in heaven. So you won't be able to run the little of the valley and ask people to pray for you. There'll be nobody preaching that little of the valley. Other churches, all right. And I want to say, if you allow me to interject, you know, in the book, uh, there was a, a, a one of the prominent preachers from the church who was left behind, mm -hmm. and so he right away stepped in. And I, I, I mean, that's good, but that does not mean that that that's what's going to happen at your church right. or in your vicinity. I mean, because first of all. The way I see it, I mean, that's one author's, uh, his, his view or his speculation. But the thing about it is, if a preacher is left behind, I can only imagine the turmoil that he's going to have to go through coming to grips with the fact that I've missed the rapture. I've missed the rapture. And then not only that, but he has to deal with all of these things that are going on. So that doesn't say that somebody will be ready to take the reins as the rapture takes place. You just don't know. More than likely, that's not going to happen. There may be some exceptions to the rule mm -hmm. because you're dealing with the whole world. So there may be a few exceptions. But any preacher that is here after the rapture simply means he was not saved. And it's sad to say you have some preachers. You got some bad preachers, some folk who... who will not live right, and will not preach the truth, all right? But the point I'm getting ready to make is this. Why were these people under the altar in heaven? They don't have their physical body yet. It's just spirit, man, which is the soul. They're crying to the Lord, and they're crying out to the Lord. So how long? I'm reading Revelation 6 and 10 now. Revelation 6 and 10. How long, O oh Lord, holy and true, does that not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And of course, the Lord gives a response to them, and he tells them that they, in verse 11 that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. The Lord said, Now they ask him, Lord, when are you going to revenge us? When are you going to take revenge on what has happened? You know, you know what has happened to them? They've gotten their heads cut off. If you try to come to the Lord and to be saved in the tribulation period, it's going to be very difficult at that point, uh, especially for someone who will live like here in America, where right now we do enjoy uh, freedom of religion. Now, I, I know the world is kind of changing or turning against the church, but we still have it relatively easy right now. But remember, Jesus said that in the tribulation period, that it would be the worst time the world. And, and what this scripture is indicating, I'm going to give you another reference to show you that they would be beheaded. What the scripture is indicating is that the Antichrist and other forces are going to chase these people down because what they're going to do, they're going to try to stop the influence of God. They're going to try to stop people. Why? Because the devil is going to be doing all he can to fight against God at this particular time to make things real hard and very bad. Listen, listen folks, you, you're living in a time of mercy right now. This is real time of mercy and grace. But when the tribulation period comes, God is going to remove some of his mercy. It will no longer be 
what we call the period of grace, although there will be grace, it would not be like it is now. And so, so if you try to live saved then, uh, the devil is going to make it as hard as possible. And the sad thing about it is most of these people, Sister Riley, are going to be killed. What scripture do I have to support this? Revelation 20 and 4. I know you right now said so the scripture. Revelation 20 and 4. And, and this is what John said. Then he said, I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. Listen to this. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. So, so that scripture ties into where I am now in, in Revelation 6, uh, verses 10 and 11, uh, where you, you find that these people were their soul, which means they'd already been killed. And the Lord said, yeah, y'all just rest a little while. Look what the scripture said. Let me go back to verse 11. Rest yet for a little season until your fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were. So the Lord is saying some more people are going to be killed. Now, I'm not saying that every tribulation saint will be killed, but a majority will be. Many of them. And the ones who, are, who have not been killed, uh, persecution. Is going to be much worse because we're going to get into the mark of the beast. Might not maybe get to it tonight, might do it next week. But the mark of the beast, uh, if you're saved in that period, you cannot take the mark of the beast. And that's in Revelation chapter 13. Well, let's go there now. Let's go there now. Uh, now. You got me going in chronological order. Man. Yeah. Fit C and now you're going to have to the mark of the beast. Well, the, the fact is, See, Revelation itself is not chronologically written. I understand. And a lot of these events, the, the things that are going on, are happening throughout. Simultaneous. Simultaneously, yeah. Okay. So let's read Revelation uh, 13 and 16, because this is, this is speaking about the mark of the beast. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. It's verse 18. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. Now, that I read it in. His number is 600, three score, and six. That's that. Number 666, six, six. all right, it's the number of a man. The mark is going to be where? Right hand mm -hmm. or your forehead. That, that mark does not necessarily mean it's 666, six, six, like a lot of people think. 666 six, six is the number of his name, actually. But whatever this mark is, people, when people get ready to buy goods or sell things, you're going to have to show the mark. In order to show the mark, it means you're going to have to bow down and worship the beast who is the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to be saved, you can't bow down and worship the Antichrist because you worship the Antichrist, you worship the Satan. All right, okay. go ahead. What's your question? Uh, let's, let's deal with uh, one question that said, is having a tattoo in your body, is that a mark of the beast? That's the first thing. And then I want you to deal with the, the uh, thought that some people are saying that to get the vaccine is a mark of the beast. Okay. First of all, to talk about the tattoo. They're trying to put a chip in our yeah. body. But first of all, to talk about the uh, the tattoo, get, receiving the tattoo is not the mark of the beast. Although I am against tattoo, I'm against them for uh, biblical reasons. Uh, it is not in the will of God that we make cuttings on our flesh. You have a scripture over the, in the book of Leviticus. And I know some people for you who are older will say, well, they, they say the Old Testament does not apply because it's under law. No, because see, here's the thing. Everything is written in the Old Testament, that's not necessarily law. That's a whole nother discussion I have to go into. I don't have time to go there right now. But the tattoo itself is not the mark of the beast, okay? The second part, the vaccine, the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. 
Now, you know how I know that? That's easy. That's easy because, number one, the Antichrist, I told you at the beginning, cannot be revealed, cannot be revealed until what happened? The rapture of the church. So that means the mark of the beast cannot happen until he's revealed. I don't think Mark the Beast is going to start exactly on day one of the tribulation. It's going to be on over in the tribulation. I think it's going to be in the first half, though, less tribulation. All right. So we know that's not the, the Mark of the Beast, folks. The, the, that, that vaccine, they did not put a chip in you. <laughs> there, there are no chips in you. There. So that is not the Mark of the Beast. But that is erroneous teaching. There are no scriptures to base that on at all. But now let's go back to the mark of the beast since we own this particular thing. I will say this, the technology for the Antichrist to actually do that is already here. Why, 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 why do I say this? Most of y'all, let me hold up something the screen. Most of y'all have had this contraption, cell phone. This cell phone allows uh, people of the government and other officials to practically track your every move, whether it's on or off. Mm -hmm. Why do you think when you when you are traveling somewhere and it, it, it's a routine, uh, what I mean, traffic, uh, traffic jam or uh, accident, that, and they um, tell you sometimes they tell us that it's an accident. Well, that that's not what I had in mind. But I, let me say this: if you're going on, like sometimes we've gone on vacation, we have our GPS on. And we're looking at GPS to give a direction and it tells take an alternate route because there's an accident here that show you uh, just how intricate and how uh, well developed this, this thing is. But what I was getting ready to say, uh, like, uh, like you go to Lake Village every day mm -hmm. to go to school. She may have a message on there sometime, how long she get ready to come home? Every morning. Every morning. That's tell you how, how long it's gonna take you to get seconds. there. Tell you that the traffic is light. See, it's tracking you. It's tracking your your movements. See, and uh, it uses artificial intelligence right. to guess where you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, it tells me when it's time to go to church. You know how long it take me to get to Little Little Valley. Right. You know, so different right. things like this. So it tracks your movement. Yeah. Uh, let me say this real quick. Uh, these folks that are in the criminal activity, these these crooks. They're not, they're not so smart because actually the policemen, many times to catch them and to catch them in line, they use the information from the cell phone. Yes. Tells exactly so, where you are at right. any given time. All right. Here's a question. What about 9-11? They can tell where you are as long as you stay on the phone. Yeah. Well, all this, I found some of those. Right. All of this is, right. All of this is, is built in. Mm -hmm. it, piece of equipment like yeah it it helps us so this this is not evil this is not evil but what i'm trying to tell you the, the computer systems and gps systems and all of this this is technology that's already here that the antichrist is probably going to be able to use to try to control the world do you not know that you can go on your computer uh your cell phone you can put out satellite images of your house, Google Earth. Google Earth. You can actually see live shots. You, I think one of those uh, places you have to pay just a little fee if you want to see the live shots, but you go there and see live shots. And so if that kind of technology is, is, is here, and Christ no doubt will use it. All right, but going back to the fifth seal, I was trying to explain to you about these people going to be going to be killed. Listen, do not wait. Don't, don't let the devil put in your mind, oh, if I don't get saved today and the rapture take place, I'm just going to repent during that time. More than likely, you are not going to repent. Not saying you won't, but a lot of you won't. <laughs> just, that, that's just the bottom line. And if you do, there are going to be some people going to repent. They're going to backslide. They're going to give up because it's going to be so hard. Because you know we can't go without food. We Americans, when we love our food. It's going to be terrible. The sixth seal is very interesting. It is, it is very interesting, y'all. Uh, it begins in verse 12, Revelation 6 and 12. Let me read parts of it because I need to talk about this one. And I beheld 
when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So the Lord said, this earthquake going to be the worst one we've ever seen. The ash is going go to gonna go up into the sky. It's going to cover the sun. It's going to make it dark. So that the, the sun like is black and at night the moon gonna look like it's red. Now, let me tell you this, there is a volcano out west, I don't know if it's in Utah or Idaho, but it's a huge volcano that's been inactive for years since right, dormant. And these scientists are saying that uh, it is going to erupt possibly in our lifetime and so the eruption would be so bad until the western half of the United States is going to be getting up in dark. It is a huge volcano, they, they, they say, that's actually underground. So there are volcanoes all over the world. Look at this, verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell onto their now. Stars, he is talking about meteor, meteorites. Mm -hmm. And then verse 14 said, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together and every mountain and every island will move out of their place. So this earthquake and all this stuff gonna shake up things. Things gonna be moving out of their place. I suppose you're gonna have some tsunamis during this time. That's probably gonna cause some problems on the coastal area. That's verse 14 that I just read. But let's look at verse 15. This is what I'm really trying to go. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Now, did y'all kings, great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, every bondman, so that's really talking about servants and free men, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And if you go to the very next verse, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the land, the land is Jesus. Uh, people are going to be running to the mountains for shelter. Let me just say this. It is a known fact, people, that every industrialized nation in this world, which certainly includes the United States, that there are bomb shelters that have been carved out underneath mountains or inside of mountains. 9-11, we're on the anniversary, coming up to the anniversary of 9-11. Y'all remember George Bush, George W. Bush was president. When, when those planes crashed, one hit, well, two of them hit the Twin Towers in New York City, one hit the Pentagon, another was on the way to hit the White House. Uh, when that all that took place on 9-11, we didn't know what was going on in America. The officials thought we were under an attack by, by the enemy. George Bush, if y'all remember, you, and just watch it the next couple of weeks. They're going to be on the anniversary of 9-11. They're going to show all kind of uh, video. George Bush was down there in Florida. They put him on a plane immediately to fly him to a some naval base, an Air Force base, to get him secured. The vice president, the president's wife, and all of them, they took them into an underground bunker underneath the White House. There's a bunker down there. The Speaker of the House, President Pro Tem, uh, and other high-ranking senators and military men, they put them in helicopters. And guess where they flew them? They flew them to the mountains of Virginia. Washington, D.C., as you know, it is, it is in between the state of Maryland and the state of Virginia. So, you, you know, you then Washington, D.C., you're right there at the, uh, the state line of Virginia. They're all kind of mountains, the Appalachian Mountains in that area. There are rooms carved inside of these mountains that if we come under attack for, for a nuclear war, they can get the uh, people to those bunkers for safety to protect them so that they have a place to lead the country in, in terms of that. Not only for nuclear war, but other natural disasters. See, it, it, this COVID-19 was to get worse and really, really, really get bad stuff. Uh, killing a million folks, they'd take these folks. I'm pretty sure they got some kind of air purifying system in there. Those rooms, or what they got inside there in Virginia, is large enough to, to house the entire Congress, y'all. How many folks in Congress? 535 people in Congress. 
and you got enough room to put them in. They got apartments, uh, they got kitchens, they got food, water, all that's stored in there. Hmm. That's not the only thing, because I had a tenant for you, I got a chance to pull up this company called Vivos, or Vivo, V-I-V-O-S. Since we didn't put it up, well, we, we almost, our time is just about out. Google this. I, you young people, y'all got computers, V-I-V-O-S. Google it. That's a company that has underground shelters in the state of Indiana, and I think the other one, other one is in Oklahoma. You need about $50,000 you can pay for it. And the purpose is so that if you, if there is a war or a natural disaster that people need to, to reach safety, in case of that happening, say you have to get there quickly and get secured because they're going to close the gate at a particular time uh, for you to get there. But here's the point. I'm, I'm telling you this because this stuff is real. We already have this in our world today. The United States plus Russia, China, all of these big nations, probably some of the small nations as well. And, and, and when you read this scripture where the, the kings of the earth, the great men, all these people are going to run to where? To these mountains, the dens, to hide themselves. Here you have this prophecy, but I'm telling you about some stuff that's real to show you that they already got this stuff built, not necessarily for this prophecy, but, but the Lord revealed this to John to show him what's going to happen. So the technology and all this is here. Our time is just about out. And, and uh, there's so much more to cover. So you're saying I won't be back next week, perhaps? Uh, yes, our books will probably be back next week. Okay. So, but they won't, they're not, not going to be back. I think it. Well, it said September 10th, I believe. Okay. Our books will be back September 10th, so that, and I'll be giving them out. So that they won't be next Tuesday. Then. No. So uh, if the Lord say the same, and, and if y'all not tired of me teaching, and I hope that I'm breaking it out enough for you to really see what is going on, uh, let me just say this to you. We will continue this so I can get in to show you again what's going to happen between the uh, Going from lesser tribulation to greatest tribulation, showing some other things that's going to happen. Because look, I have even what I've shared with you is a small tip of the iceberg. Because what about when these meteors start hitting the earth? That's what's going to come up in, the, in our next discussion. Uh, what about when 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 all the fish are going to start dying, marine life, more earthquakes, our right, sicknesses and diseases? Uh, perhaps are going to be happening during this time. You got a lot more stuff that's going to be happening. I'm going to go back to when, when Satan or the devil is going to be cast in the earth. They're going to be very angry. And what he's going to, what he's going to be trying to do. Plus, we're going to look at a few things that the Antichrist is going to do to try to take over the whole world and cause a lot of problems. You got a lot of stuff that's going to be taking place. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, people. Today is your day of salvation today you need to get it right with god because the rapture could take place this evening tonight and what's going to happen to you if the rapture take place this is serious business and so we we we, we, we are not teaching this uh as something to just scare you you know that yeah that's some scary stuff that's happening but i'm not scared of it because my life is in the hand of the lord and that is that i'm saved and I am sanctified, and I'm ready to go back with the Lord when it comes, the day of the rapture. I'm not worried about this, but if you're not saved, you ought to be worried. You ought to be in trouble, but you don't have to stay that way. The Lord will save you right now, and if I have persons that are here, you want to give your heart to the Lord, I'm going to pray a simple uh, prayer of repentance, and if you would repeat these words and be earnest about it and really mean this in your heart the lord will hear your hear the prayer and will save you right now if you want to be saved close your eyes simply pray this prayer dear lord i thank you for letting me live today i thank you for your word lord jesus i realize that i am a sinner and with sin i won't be ready to go back with you. 
when you come. When come. Lord Jesus, when come. I confess my sin. Confess my sin. I, repent I repent now. Lord, I am sorry, I'm sorry Lord, for what I have done. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me today. Save me today. And with your help, with your help, I'm gonna live right. I'm gonna live right. I'm gonna do what you said to do. What you said to do. I'm gonna be your child. I'm gonna be your child. Help me now, Lord. Help me now, Lord. Empower me, Lord. Empower me to Lord. live this life. Live this life. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's as simple as that. If you meant what you said, the Lord heard your prayer. And the Lord has forgiven you. Now you need to be, you need to be taught the word of the Lord. For those of you that are coming to church, you, you come to church and you listen to what we're teaching and preaching. And, 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 and there are others who are not, not members of Little Valley, but we'd be glad if you continue to certainly be in Bible study, church services. You, you need to be taught what is right, that you can grow in the Lord and listen. You can make it, you can live right. The Lord, the power of the Lord will enable you, will help you, and you can be ready when the Lord returns on the day of the rapture. All right, Sister Pat. All right, we just want to say to our young people, our books are have been shipped. They say that they will be here on September 10th. I know that seems like a long time. I don't know why it's taking them so long, but it, maybe it's because of the number that I um, that I ordered, but they will be here on September 10th. So we will have one more day. Did you take us through the lesser tribulation? Well, uh, yeah, basically what we were dealing with, lesser tribulation, yeah. yeah. So we will be right back here. I hope you've been taking notes because as we read, we may have some questions or we'll be able to look back at our notes to see exactly what is going on. So we thank God for having a pastor who is knowledgeable, who is able to rightly divide the word of truth. And so we just want to say to you that um, uh, we will see you again tomorrow night for prayer yes. and then Thursday night for prayer and Bible study, if the Lord will. Um, we love you. We'll see you soon. God bless you.